Hello everyone, welcome along to another video here on the channel. My name's Ash, you'll know me as Brahma18. Today I've got something a little bit different for you with the FIFA 23 release having just come upon us. Um, obviously we've been messing with different sliders and gameplay settings and stuff. Um, but I wanted to do something a little bit different today and that was I wanted to test out Spoonie Peter's gameplay sliders and settings for FIFA 23. Now if any of you who don't know him, Spoonie Peter's is a... Pez slash FIFA slash eFootball YouTuber. Um, I'll be honest, one of my favourites. Um, you know, big fan of him. So I'm checking that out. I thought I'd do something a bit different where I would actually test them out for the first time live and see if they are worth it. So I'm going to leave a link to the video down below where you can see his sliders. Um, I'm going to very quickly show you stuff um, with regards to the settings and stuff, but I want you to go and check out that video as well and have a look. And you can see him kind of testing them out live in career mode and stuff like that as well. We're just going to go into a kickoff game and see what they're like. But very quickly, the half length is actually on three minutes, which is something I've never ever done before. Never ever tried three minute halves before. So this is something completely new for me. He says difficulty level on world class is the best way to go. I actually agree with that. I've actually found out in FIFA 23, world class is actually a little bit more challenging because the AI actually play more realistically. They're more willing to cross the balls in. Whereas on legendary, it's just constantly passing it across the face of goal into the box where they will be unmarked. So I think this world-class difficulty level definitely will work. And also on default game speed, which again, I am also in agreement with Spoonie there, where I think that with default game speed, you tend to find there's much more pressing to a more realistic level. The marking is better. Defenders will move a bit more. Um, whereas in slow, everything kind of defensively just falls apart a little bit. So... That's very, very cool. We'll see how it goes. Very, very minor change to the sliders. Just 40 pass speed and then 100 on marking for both the user and CPU. This is why I'm really intrigued to see how this works. It's something very, very different to what we've tried. I'm just going to a game with Everton and Southampton, um, two fairly evenly matched teams. So we'll go into this and just see how it plays out. Just let you know, I don't know if any of you can see the mess behind me or anything. I do apologise for that. Any of you who have been watching my Chelsea video will know I mentioned that the setup is changing around here and I'm kind of in the middle of that as we speak. So just bear with me on that, please. So let's see how it goes. Like I say, intrigued to see kind of the three minute halves. I feel like, yes, we do need short halves to try and limit the goals, but I'm wondering whether that will be a little bit too little time. Um, so we're going to find out. It's a little bit fast. What I did actually do um, on my own, actually, which is something you would have seen in the Pep Guardiola video, is I did actually lower the sprint speed and acceleration to about 46, just a little bit. And I'm noticing as soon as we've obviously moved it back up to 50 for this video that all of a sudden um, there is a massive difference. Um, so that is maybe something I would probably look into. Again, a little bit end to end, I would probably also look at um, maybe changing the run frequency as well. That is something I also kind of lowered down as I was tinkering with the sliders a little bit just to try and make it less end-to-end. -end it's something that all of a sudden I am, am noticing again as we kind of reverted back to these sliders. We've got an opportunity here cutting him to Calvert-Lewin and there it is, 1-0. But what I will say is though, up until this point, it has looked a little bit harder to try, to try and break teams down both ways for the CPU and also for myself and that's obviously to do with the, the 100 markings so I think there's definitely something to that as you just notice in there with that passage of play there is definitely um, you know a, a difference with the pass speed as well but I actually don't mind that I think that's actually that actually works out quite well um, you can also kind of make adjustments to the to the power bar input as well um if you're you're kind of finding that an issue see what happens here as southampton have an attack in the final few seconds of the game well won by mikalenko oh there we go last minute equalizer 95th minute even though there's only a minute added on so there you go i'd like to have a quick look at the replay of that actually let's have another look see what the marking was like in that instance so he's over at the back post Really looking for the right back. Maybe this point, even with 100 marking, that is a surprise. But again, it can happen in football, so fair enough. Right, so that's full time. 
What I would say is initially I would probably look to up the half length a little bit. I definitely see what he's getting at with the shorter half lengths. It's something that I've kind of messed with myself. Um, three minutes is a little bit short for me. The game kind of went by a little bit too quickly. I think maybe I would try upping that to four. He's definitely on something there with the short half lengths. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm actually going to test the tactic again with obviously two kind of elite teams. And we're also going to use Liverpool. Um, well, we're going to use Man City and we're going to play against Liverpool because they've got the kind of real threat on that counter-attack that I think could be really kind of handy to test out this sort of thing, whether or not um, you know the marking works out properly. So let's see how this one goes now that we're using these two kind of five-star teams. The marking's definitely much more improved, as you can kind of see, as you'd imagine, with the 100 marking. Um, you know, just less kind of players being free for both sides, you know, which is much respect. You see there, like Haaland, that run is getting tracked all the way, which often doesn't happen when it's your player against the AI. Oh, that's a chance then, Haaland. Surely got a score, and he does so. Nice, nicely worked goal. But again, though, it, it didn't feel too easy to, to kind of do that, which is good. Very good. Van Dijk tracking Haaland really, really well. Really well. That's nice, that is. The thing is, in that situation, you'd notice that, that usually, if it was just on 50 marking, your guys would have just had a free run in then. And it, it just feels a bit too, you know, exploity. Right, so that's full time. I would say that um, there weren't too much difference really in terms of the two different teams uh, with regards to the games themselves. You know, kind of felt fairly comfortable in both. Let's go and have a look at the sliders now and see kind of what the overall verdict is. So with regards to these, I definitely think he's on the right track with this personally. I, I agree with the kind of principles of this. Um, for one, I would say the half length. I would personally up a little bit to four. Three just feels a little bit too quick for me. Goes by a bit too quickly, the game does. Difficulty level world class, completely agree with that. And the same with default game speed as well. Um, one thing I would probably do is maybe turn on player-based difficulty just to add a little bit of difficulty. You know, you tend to find that obviously the better players will, you know, just generally be more intelligent. Um, so I would consider that. With regard to the sliders themselves, um, generally the marking obviously was was really good and that felt good. Occasionally though what you'd find is that it would glitch out a little bit and certain players would then track runners that were behind the kind of passage of play and, and leave the other runners free because the marking is so high. So that can happen but I don't really know how to address that. So I, I would definitely consider sticking with this marking being so high. The pass speed was absolutely fine as well. Uh, no problem with that being on 40. The only other tweaks I'd make to this would be things like the sprint speed and acceleration. I would lower them down a little bit, I think, to something like 48. The run frequency as well, I would hack down considerably somewhere to around 30 mark for both teams because you just want to try and make it a little bit less end-to-endy. And then with regards to if you still find it a little bit too easy, I would then probably start trying to look into things like full manual. Um, you know, manual passing, manual shooting, etc. At the very least, semi-assisted um, to try and boost that up, um, difficulty-wise. But generally, I think these are these are okay. Uh, there's definitely a really good starting basis on, and um, you know, I think Spoonie's really well onto something here. So give them a try. See what you think. Let me know in the comment section down below, and also check out Spoonie. I'm going to leave a link to his channel down below. Um, so really check him out. Like I say, he's really, really good. One of my favourites. If you haven't done so already, make sure to check out my Patreon. The link to that is down below. You get access to a range of fantastic perks, like my FIFA 23 tactics package, um, behind the scenes videos, early access to videos, exclusive tactics videos, all sorts of great perks on there. Check out my second channel. The link is down below. And also my Recreate Real Tactics series and my Chelsea Career Mode series. On that note, we're going to round it off there. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you soon.